Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth video in the Pete McKee Art History series. If you are new to this channel, then thank you for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share if you enjoy this video. I'm Ellen, the curator at the McKee Gallery, and today we'll be looking at one of Pete McKee's works of art and we'll discuss its influences. If you're not familiar with who Pete McKee is, then please check out the beginning of our first video, which gives insight into how Pete became an artist and the style he is known for. A link to this video can be found below. Today we will be looking at Pete's painting, The Girl with the Fake Pearl Earring. Pete created this piece for his 2018 summer exhibition, This Class Works, which was located in Sheffield's Neeps End, one of the many areas in the city distinguished by old industrial buildings, with the exhibition itself located inside a former spring factory. This show was an exploration and celebration of the working class, for which Pete created various paintings and installations examining this theme. It was also collaborative and exhibited work by several other artists, all who explored this subject in distinct ways, using varied media. Although Pete's work from this show mainly concentrated on contemporary working class culture, the girl with the fake pearl earring depicts a Sheffield buffer girl. The term buffer girl was used to describe the women who worked during the 19th and 20th centuries in the metalwork industry. Buffer refers specifically to the task of buffing metal goods and cutlery, eradicating dents and rough sections, which often remained on the products after they'd been through the grinding process, leaving their surfaces smooth and shiny. It was a very tough and grimy job, which made it highly difficult to stay clean whilst doing it. This is why employees would wear headscarves and neckerchiefs in an attempt to keep the dirt off. Some would even tie brown paper around their legs to stop the swath, fine chips or filings of metal, that would be propelled from the machinery into their clothes. Sheffield is world famous for its production of stainless and crucible steel, which was developed locally. As early as the 17th century, three out of every five men in Sheffield worked in one of the cutlery trade branches. During Queen Victoria's reign, enormous steelworks were built in the city's east end. The production of steel was extremely successful and overtook Sheffield's cutlery industry as its most major one. However, the cutlery trade remained important as the city continued to produce large quantities of this product and was even the world's main producer of cutlery during the 1860s and 70s. During the 20th century, the way cutlery was made changed forever with the introduction of stainless steel. The way the material needed to be processed differed from previous methods, requiring machinery which did various jobs including grinding and polishing the blades. Even though the production of Sheffield cutlery managed to survive after World War II, eventually its manufacture was dramatically reduced due to the competitive prices that were available overseas, which meant that business began to dwindle in Sheffield from the 1960s onwards. Economic problems during the 1970s and 80s also contributed to the reduction of the Sheffield cutlery industry. In an article on Museums Sheffield's website entitled History of the Cutlery Industry, it explains the sharp decline of people working in this trade. By the 1990s, there were only around a thousand people employed by a dozen or so in cutlery manufacturers left in Sheffield. Now that we have briefly examined the history of Sheffield's steel and cutlery industry and the role of a buffer girl, we can now discuss the photo that inspired Pete's painting. On explaining his motivation behind this work, Pete said he was inspired by a Sheffield buffer girl. Her youthful innocence shone out from a group of women who were, begrudgingly, photographed for a Sheffield Star article in the 1960s. When I spotted her tucked away in the corner, I was taken aback by how much she resembled Vermeer's stunning girl with a pearl earring, right down to the large, teardrop-shaped, fake pearl earring she wore. I felt I had no option but to pay homage to this young woman, rendering her in paint on board in the style of Vermeer's original masterpiece. It is interesting to know that the photo Pete studied for his painting was taken in the 1960s. As previously discussed, it was during the 1960s when the cutlery industry began to significantly decline in Sheffield, which means the women in the photograph, including the one Pete painted, are arguably some of the last buffer girls that would have worked using methods that had been employed for decades before modern technology took over. We will now examine Johannes Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl Earring and how Pete has taken direct stylistic inspiration from it. Pete has painted a black background that surrounds his figure, seen in the original, which makes the women in both paintings stand out. It is interesting to note that recent research that took place in the last couple of years has uncovered that the current colour of the background in Vermeer's painting was not intentional. In fact, Vermeer originally painted a dark green curtain which served as a backdrop for the sitter, which has long since faded. 
Peter's taken further inspiration from Vermeer's colour palette, employing a similar yellow and blue for the Buffer Girl's headscarf. The outfit Pete Sitter wears is also similar in colour, yet she wears the protective apron she would have used when working. Her eyes are closed like the woman in the photograph Pete has based this character on, capturing her essence and painting her in profile. In Vermeer's mysterious painting, the ethereal-looking sitter is shown in a three-quarter profile and looks directly at the viewer, her lips slightly parted. Few colours are used, predominantly blue, yellow, white, brown and black, all colours Vermeer regularly painted with. What originally would have been green, the now dark background outlines the delicate figure and contrasts with the bright light reflected off the pearl earring that dangles from her ear. This work deviates from the artist's typical subjects, as Vermeer often painted domestic and interior scenes known as genre paintings that became highly popular during the 16th and 17th centuries in both Dutch and Flemish art. There has been enduring speculation about who the sitter was. The 1999 novel Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier, which was later turned into a film and a play, created a fictional narrative around her. This is interesting to note, as Pete has not only created similarities between his work and that of Vermeer's by borrowing stylistic influences, but like Vermeer's work, the subject of Pete's painting is also elusive, as still to this day, Pete does not know who this person is. Both works remain mysterious. However, it is important to note that although Vermeer's painting still remains intriguing because of its subject matter, research shows that the picture is in fact not a portrait, but actually a study of a woman's head, known as a trony, which meant face in Dutch during the 16th and 17th centuries, and were popular in both Dutch and Flemish Baroque painting at the time. Tronies were painted to symbolise particular emotions, expressions or stock characters. In the case of Vermeer's painting, the sitter, who wears a turban, represents what would have been seen at the time as an exotic character. However, mystery still surrounds the work as the sitter's identity has not yet been discovered. It is not just this work that is surrounded by questions, as despite being one of the most influential masters in painting, very little is known about Vermeer. This is because there is not only a lack of documentation on the artist, but also because very few works that are attributed to him exist, what has been said to be around 34 to 36 works. Born in Delft, a city in the Netherlands in 1632, Vermeer's earliest existing works are from the 1650s. He began painting religious and mythological subjects, but as previously mentioned, he is particularly famous for his genre paintings. One of the theories behind his relatively small artistic output is that he inherited an inn and a picture dealer business from his father that would have demanded much of his time. However, despite owning these businesses, he had serious financial problems complicated by supporting his wife and 11 children. It has also been suggested that some of his early works were destroyed in the Delft magazine explosion of 1654. Vermeer died insolvent in 1675, which left his family in an impoverished state. Although his work remained under the radar during the 18th and 19th centuries, his work has become world famous, and Girl with a Pearl Earring, located at the Hague's Mauritz House, is now one of the Netherlands' most famous paintings, having been coined the Mona Lisa of the Low Countries. Because this work is so iconic, it has been referenced countless times in popular culture and in other artworks. For example, Ethiopian-American artist Awol Arisco, pictured right, who regularly uses the media of photography, film, sculpture and painting in his artwork, referenced Vermeer's painting in his photographic piece, Girl with the Bamboo Earring, which can be viewed in a link below the video. With this piece, the artist makes political and social statements, commenting on the lack of black representation in museums and galleries by replacing Vermeer's white model with a black sitter, while simultaneously challenging outdated and limited views on what constitutes beauty. We hope you have enjoyed this art historical insight into both Pete McKee and Vermeer's work and the connection between the two. Don't forget to check out our next art history video where we'll examine another McKee work and its influences that draw on the history of art. Many thanks for watching.